You know what's really annoying is that I have this song stuck in my head. You know that song that's like, do, 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 do. I have that song stuck in my head. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's even going to come on here, come on this live with me. We'll see. I did an unplanned tutorial. Very impromptu, very last minute. So if you guys are going to hop on, say hi, let me know that you guys are here. We are doing a Christmas ornament tutorial tonight. Wanda and Katie did not go live yesterday. Understandable. They do so many lives. They deserve a break. So here we are. We are going to be doing some fun stuff. Sorry for those who don't like ASMR. At the crinkling of all of this goodness. This is the Old World Christmas set. Come on down. Opening them up, brand new. Oh. Hey, Bonita. Where's the thing to this? Hey, Mary. Hi, Rachel. Boo for not being able to watch, but that's okay. As long as you catch the replay, that's fine. Hey, Shay. Hello, Tina. I have not even swatched these yet. I haven't even opened them yet. I wanted to do a, a full tutorial with them before and I was trying to figure out what do I do, what do I do? And then I was like, man, these colors scream either ornaments or, there we go, or a nutcracker and everybody voted for ornaments. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm going to probably give people like another five minutes to pop on, catch the live while I get set up. Honestly, my wet palette is pretty full. I don't know that I want to, I don't think that I want to like empty it. Hello, hello. Ooh, Shay, what did you paint with them? What did you paint with those colors? Ooh, hi, Elizabeth. Hello, everybody. Come on down. Grab your paint, grab your rocks. Come paint with me. Well, I look for some miscellaneous stuff over here. everybody a couple minutes to hop on. I didn't announce it. I didn't say that I was going to go live, so I'm sorry for those who aren't going to get the chance to paint along, but that's okay. I should probably tag. I should do like a at everybody thing. Let me see. Um, let me see if it works. Uh, at everyone. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry if you guys are going to get an annoying notification. Hello, hello, everybody. Diana here. It's your friendly neighborhood, Diana. Trying to do some swatches. And we're going to do a full tutorial today. So, I'm going to be working on like a... Mm, this is about, I want to say, three or four, three by four rock. And if you got some stencils, take out your stencils. This is the one that I'm going to use for my ornaments. Or if you have like a bottle of paint or anything that you might want to use. Well, I might actually use this. This size is kind of nice. 
make sure that you guys are grabbing a rock that is big enough for it. So here's my vision, right? One, two, three ornaments. One is going to be gold, one is going to be red, one is going to be blue. They're going to be laying in snow, and then they're going to have some evergreens around them. It's going to be real pretty. Just trust me on it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to swatch these colors because it's my first time opening them. So we do have some of the acrylic fluids, and we have some shimmer shots with it. So four shimmer shots and four acrylics. Uh, let me grab a paintbrush that's kind of clean. Hello, hello. Say hello if you guys are stopping in. God, I can already tell that the pigment on this is insane. Yep. Knew it. So satisfying. So we're just swatching. I'm doing a very impromptu live. So I'm trying to give people a chance to gather their things, gather their paints. If you guys don't have this specific set, it's okay. The world will continue. But this is the set that I'm gonna be using for this. And um, just try to, if you don't have it, Try to get the colors that you do have on hand as close as possible. Ooh, this vintage red. It reminds me of like one of those really old pickup trucks. It's giving me those like evergreen vibes. They really hit the nail on the head with the set, man. With the colors, it just makes me feel like Christmas. It screams Christmas. It screams cozy, like watching by the fireplace oh i like this color oyster pearl hold on i still have red on my brush okay this one is the cognac velvet brown so fancy Ooh. It's like a really pretty copper, like a dark, deep copper. Hi, Adriana. Sorry, I said that's so Mexican right now. Hi, Adriana. Hi, Susan. My Hispanic came out when I said your name. <laughs> All right, this is, that was a uh, medallion gold. And here's Latte Pearl. Okay, so, oh my God, this color, it's gorgeous. Okay, so here's our color palette, guys. This is what we're working with. That doesn't mean that we're just gonna use that because I am gonna use like black. Um, did you guys hear that? That's thunder. I hope I don't lose power. Okay, um, grab some black, grab some white. You guys have it um some baby blue if you have it I'll look over here in my little bin I'm be using the light blue and that's it that's it so is anybody gonna be painting oh are you really okay look at you Brazilian over here Love it. Hello, Anita. Hey, Susan. Did I say hi to you, Susan? I'm sorry if I didn't. Hi, Aliena. Aliena. I said it like that. Aliena. Aliena. All right. So I'm going to grab my little whatever the stencil thing. Let me grab a pencil. And I'm early, guys, so that it's hopefully enough time to, to do this. So if you guys are painting a lawn or plan on painting a lawn, let me know. 
And if not, if I don't have nobody painting along and you just you guys just want to watch and chit chat, then come on down. What bricks? Are you talking about Patricia? <laughs> Did you see a spider on my desk or something? <laughs> Tell me now. <laughs> Ooh, Mary, sitting in a hotel in Galveston. What are you doing, girl? Where are you at? Are you on vacation? Okay, I see you, Patricia. I was about to freak out because we do have a lot of spiders here in Oklahoma. <laughs> like, a lot of spiders. I have to constantly, like, be sweeping it up and... Making sure that all the little crevices aren't full of stuff, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go do it on my own pace type of thing. Since I know that this is just last minute. So I'm going to grab my little stencil and I'm going to plan around my rock. You guys, I always know, I always say this, make sure that you guys have enough space on your rock. If you see that you're doing a tutorial, don't grab like the smallest possible rock that you can because, I mean, come on, <laughs> we're not going to fit much in there, much detail or anything like that. So look at your rock, look at the shape of your rock. For me, this would be a little bit odd if I did it this way because it just, it looks too disproportionate and it might mess up my visual. Um, this way, it's a little bit better. So look at your rock, actually like look at it, look at the area, look at which side you want to paint on. This one has a little divot here, so I'm going to just use this side and make sure that you plan around the center of your rock. Make sure that when you're doing your circles for your ornaments, that they're not like over here, you know, you don't have just three circles over here and then the rest of the rock is kind of just blank. You want to make sure that they're centered, that they're big enough so that you, but not too big. Don't let it overpower your rock either because we still want to save some room for some evergreen leaves over here. And we're going to go. We're just going to go for it. So let's do your first circle. There it is. Here's mine. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between that one and this one. You can see the space right there. Make sure I'm not going off my rock. And then for this one, this last one, it's going to be sort of in between these two, right? I might actually end up moving it up a little bit because I don't know that I'm going to have room. Yeah, I'm going to move this up. Okay, ignore everything Diana said. That's okay. That's what erasers are for. Okay, where's my electric eraser? All right, let's move it up. Ooh, I hate that pencil squeak noise. A little bit of space in between. And let's do in between these two, right? Because it's going to be reflecting off of these two. Erase your little line so that you know where your stuff is at. We are painting... Um, some Christmas ornaments using the Old World Christmas set. Linda, I guess there's an electric eraser and I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in this mess of a pile of desk right now. I'm too lazy to look for it. I got it, I got gifted it um, by the wonderful Jax. Ooh, that thunder. To get ham radio license. What is that? Susan, explain. Hey friend, you're at the tire shop. Ugh, you've been having a week, girl. You have been having a week. Hello, hopefully this will make the time pass a little bit faster at the tire shop. Yeah, uh, the electric, it's super cool. It's very, very tiny and it kind of just, it's kind of like drilling it off so that you don't get like too dark of a residue left over and stuff. Hello, Denise. All right, so here we are, right? I'm going to be working on this one first, the red. And I'm just going to lay my base color down. I'm actually going to draw a little circle up here at the top because this is where I want my, 
my shine to be so I know not to to go too heavy with the red there right so let's grab some of this vintage red and you're gonna see me kind of over here off to the side putting it on my palette my palette's a mess I didn't feel like emptying it out so here is the vintage red that I will be using it's because the paints are too fresh I just can't I was in a painting groove today and <laughs> did not want to empty it Get my water over here all right crystal girl you always be at that work man take me with you take me with you i will keep you entertained at work <laughs> linda yes i think she got it on amazon hey amy all right let's get their energy pumping party people okay so I'm taking my old, my old, <laughs> my vintage red, right? And we're just going to go around, go around in a circle, fill it in. This is going to have a lot of blending, a lot of blending to it. So make sure that when you're putting your paint down, that you are putting enough if you're doing it like on a, if you wanted to, honestly, just do the ornaments like on a agate or a selenite or something, you can do so and not have to include any of the snow in the background that we're going to paint. I don't know why I pause so much in between my words when I'm talking sometimes. I think it's because I'm trying to fill the time because sometimes sitting on a live like i'm down here by myself and i feel awkward just talking to myself so i have to fill in the the time you see i just did it again and then once you realize the thing that you're doing is annoying it tends to happen a lot more so i apologize if that's all i noticed from now on <laughs> all right so here is my red right i'm gonna take a little blending brush this is my little fred brush from wanda's shop as well and make sure that it's clean because you know diana always has some type of mess on her brush i'm gonna actually use a bigger one because I, I need more i need more coverage because they, they do come in different sizes so i'm gonna lay down my white here in the center my red is still wet and if it's not wet then what you can do is just grab some of your red go around it and make sure that you're getting like a pretty thick wet layer in there, right? Because the easiest way to blend your colors will be to blend wet on wet. So I'm going to grab my white again and I'm just going to start tapping it in. Now I'm not going to tap my red into my white. I'm going to start tapping out because I'm trying to spread that glow out. I'm not trying to bring the red back in because then it's just going to muddy up the white that I have right here. So I'm just going to top off the excess. And then I'm going to use the side of my brush to sort of just tap into it and start to create a nice little blend. Now, this is going to have a lot of rinse your brush. Make sure that you have the, the color completely off before going back in. I'm going to put more white in there and I'm just going to keep blending that out. Wipe it off. Keep blending it out. And by saying blend, I mean just tap it from the top. You want a nice little pink gradient between your white and your red. Oh, like a dog hair or something. It was long and blonde. <laughs> this is Luna probably. We're about to have a really good storm, which is great because we just got our roof redone. I don't know if you guys were following along with my crisis, but we had a roof leak um a couple of months ago and it completely started to like bag the ceiling down and it was right above our television we ended up getting it patched and we ended up getting it fixed yada yada but obviously the roof here was very very old very um very leaky is leaky a word it is now i'm trying to get rid of that pencil mark that's why i never sketch too dark and then I'm going to start blending in the red, try to get rid of the line, try to get rid of the pencil mark. And um, 
So anyway, they came and they fixed it, but they put a tarp over our roof, right? Because they were like, oh, well, all of the houses are scheduled to get new roofing in a couple of months. So we're just going to put a tarp over it and it'll be fine, right? Well, that tarp, it was literally just like the thinnest little piece of tarp. And we had a really bad windstorm. Um, I want to say like last week or a week and a half ago, and it completely shredded it, just demolished it there was little bits of the tarp flying everywhere and so it opened us up right and we have been having a very very dry summer well the tarp was preventing at least a little bit of moisture from getting in but now we had some rain last week and it started it obviously our our roof is messed up so it started to leak and it started leaking into our actual master bedroom so we were supposed to get our, our roof done this week. They had already scheduled it, coincidentally. We were next on the list because, you know, they've been working on the, all the roofs across the base. And we finally got to ours, called the maintenance. I was like, yo, they are, my roof is literally leaking. I have a pot in my bedroom. Can you please come help me? And they were like, well, we're just gonna literally cut it open. Took a little knife, cut through it so that it would stop leaking. They're like, they're going to fix your roof anyway, so let's just wait till they do that so that we can come in, dry it out to make sure that there's no mold growing, and then uh, we will replace it. So now I'm just waiting for them to replace it because they did work on our roof yesterday. So we got a new roof. Yay. I mean, it's not like anything too exciting because this is obviously base housing. The house does not belong to us. We live on military housing. <laughs> But if you know mil if you know anybody in the military and they've ever lived on military housing, then you know that they are, you know, not the best, not the best housing. But it's what we make do with what we got, and we are very grateful for it. But yeah, picking up and moving every two to three years is not ideal, so this is why we're here. So I created my little shine, tried to get as much blending in as I could, and this video is just going to be a whole bunch of blending okay let me get some water say hello to people hey leslie hi stacy hey k crystal i know i already said hi to you i just wanted to say your name again because i love it <laughs> hey susan uh patricia so this is the blending brush that wanda has in her shop um the foiling rock lady is the owner of the group she has sets of these they come in different little sizes. It's like a three pack. So like large, medium, and small. They are my favorite brushes for blending officially. The brush was uh, dry when I began. And then I am blending wet paint against wet paint. So that's why when I put my white paint down, I was adding red to it so that it doesn't dry in between you trying to blend. Hey, Tony. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't message you back because I went live. <laughs> Yes, Linda Army. Fort Sill, Oklahoma here. <laughs> so, I'm going to add another layer of my vintage red. I keep wanting to call it Old World Red, but the Old World is the whole set, right? <laughs> Not just the color. So, I'm just laying back down some color because I'm about to start blending some dark darkness into it and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab some of my black and sort of outline it over here bring it around town bring it all the way around and then I'm going to take my blending brush this one is completely dry it's a new brush it's a smaller brush and I'm just going to tap from the top if you do not have these brushes that's okay don't panic just use whichever fluffy brush you have around these parts of town they are known as the fred brushes i kind of started calling them that and then it just stuck and here we are these are fred brushes we're just gonna blend that down and if you don't like the way that if it's leaving any types of streaks like you can see the streaks here and around don't be afraid to add that color back on Go between blending the black and the red. 
and I'm tapping in from the top. Remember, you're not trying to drag it down because that's how you're going to get those streaks. And when I am rinsing my brush off, I am trying to get as much of the water off of it so that I'm just using the moisture that's on the brush. Ooh, see, my brush was too wet, so it's picking the paint back up. So that's fine. What do we do when we do that? When we start to pick up the paint again that we just put down, just walk away from it for a second and let it fully dry and have some patience, which is what I try to teach my kids. It's a lesson that I myself am trying to learn. I'm just going to tap it in right up until about there. Um. Ooh, Michelle, yes, then this is the um this is the life for you. Oh, Linda, that was our last duty station. That's actually where we came from. We were at Fort Carson from 20 oh, from 2021 was it yeah 2021 until last year we moved here so we didn't we didn't last very long there because my husband got drill sergeant orders so that's how we ended up here peggy those blending brushes are wanda's it's on etsy the foiling rock lady yes thank you crystal one comment below <laughs> she got it <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is it is really pouring out there. I'm going to grab some more of this. And these are just, so the vintage set is going to come in smaller bottles like this. I got these because Wanda loves me and <laughs> she sent me the big ones um, because she knows that I like do tutorials with them and stuff like that. So um, this is an acrylic fluid shot and this is just the same as regular acrylic paint except the fluidity means that it's not going to be as thick, right? A heavy bodied paint is, let me get an example of it. Hold on, I gotta move my junk journal. I've been junk journaling again, guys. So see these, like these are very heavy bodied. They're very thick, oof, very thick paint, right? But these come out just like butter, just like very smooth, very fluid. And we're gonna tap some of that down here. I'm, I'm gonna try to zoom in as much as I can, but remember that this phone holder is right above, right above the rock, so I have to crane my neck to see around it. So if I end up moving it back, I apologize, but I'm trying. And then I'm just gonna kiss the black. And when I say kiss something, it means just very lightly like dip your brush into it real quick. And we're gonna tap and blend. And we're going to blend, blend, blend. And you're like, Diana, why are we covering up the red that you just put down with the black? Well, because we do want it to look a little bit like a dark burgundy maroon color. We don't want it to just be one solid color because we're going for realism. We're not going for a cartoony looking um, ornament. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to up our art level here. Level up your own art. And you don't think that you can do it, but you can. Not that there's anything wrong with cartoony type of ornaments either. If that's your style, that's your style. Ooh, it is pouring. Oh, I'm so excited that we got a new roof. <laughs> nope, I lifted my paint up, so I'm just gonna lay it down a little bit. And we're just tapping in from the top very, very lightly. You don't wanna Hulk smash it down. You want just nice little kissy taps, right? Okay, let's bring it around town. And if you guys don't know where that reference is from, it's from SpongeBob, showing my age. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave a little corner here empty because that's where we are going to be doing another highlight. The snow is gonna be reflecting off of the bulb and the last place that I'm going to put some dark black is right here. I'm just going to tap my little red in so that I have a base to blend into because it's already dried out. And we're going to tap some black into it. And when I say tap black into it, 
the reason I'm putting the red down first is because I don't want it to just be solid black. It gives the red those like dark, burgundy, deep brick colors. It doesn't, it's not just straight black. You don't want straight black. You want like a, like a dark, rich color. And we're tapping it because if you just go straight in and you start to just draw black lines everywhere, then that's not, that's not going to be very aesthetic. All right, so from here, I'm gonna let this dry out a little bit more. And I am going to grab my neon red. You guys know that I love my neon reds. I already have some on my palette over here. Right here, my little neons. So if you don't have neon red, just grab the brightest red that you have, right? Like, and I mean the brightest red. And we're going to tap into this little ornament right about here. I want to create kind of like a, like a Cheeto, like a Cheeto puffs type of shape. Tapping it down. And then maybe we want to add a little bit more red over here to the side as well. And this is going to be the vintage red that we just used. And I'm gonna start to scatter it up here. But you're still getting that black underneath. These are really pigmented. All right, so there is my little glaze over here gonna take my neon red again and go add a little highlight right here just tap it in lightly remember we're not we're not creating a little brush stroke because if you go in and you're just like yep there it is that's what you're gonna get that's why we're tapping tapping it out there's my little glaze and then, and then we're gonna grab some yellow. Um, you can grab whichever, like the brightest yellow that you have. I am gonna be using some of the neon and probably some, it feels like a yellow ochre type of. This is the acrylic shot. If you don't have this one, then an equivalent would be like um, raw sienna, Heather's favorite color. But we're gonna use some of this. I'm gonna... Ooh, that thunder be thundering tonight. Ooh, that's so spooky. And then, y'all, my kids don't go to school tomorrow. They have a virtual day. So guess who doesn't have to wake up to go to the bus stop? <laughs> Me. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some of my um, yellow ochre. I'm gonna grab just, this is just a regular thin brush. You can use whichever one you feel more comfortable with. If you wanna use a fine liner, go ahead and do that. I just wanna put it right above this little red spot that we did. And I'm just gonna lightly put my color in. Honestly, I'm just gonna continue to use this blending brush because this thing is magic. Just tap it in. I'm gonna put some of my yellow here and tap that in as well. Right in the center. Well, I'm gonna wait for this to dry a little bit. I say, and then I continue to do it. I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit and then I'm gonna add some yellow onto that. And you will see why we're adding yellow into it because this ornament is gonna be gold. So, since they're, you know, supposed to be glass figurines, it's gonna be reflecting off of here, just like the snow is reflecting off here, and the snow will be reflecting off here, making it a little bit brighter. This one's gonna be blue, so we are gonna add a blue spot right here. Just have a little bit of patience. Can start doing that now. 
grab any type of baby blue that you have. I am using Wanda's paints tonight. Mostly, except for the black and white because I already ran out of those. And we're going to put a little blue spot here. And then don't forget that we also have this beautiful cornflower blue. I might mix these two colors up. This is the one that I was originally supposed to use and then I don't know why I got the baby blue. <laughs> I got it and I didn't look back. And then I'm just going to dab it. While this is wet, I'm going to dab in just a little bit of white to the center. Created a little bit of a purple, but that's fine. All right. I am going to be getting some water. Hey, Miss Kathy. Oh, five day weekend. That's awesome. We get four. We get Friday and then um, they are off on Monday. What should one do if your ball is looking more like it's been through the garbage this month? <laughs> Anita oh my god you're so funny I'm sure that it's not I don't know if you've noticed Anita but your art has like like who are you your art has improved drastically I think you doubt yourself too much your blending has improved everything that about your art is just like what who transformed you robots in disguise <laughs> yeah she's funny all right, so now that that yellow ochre is done, I am going to be tapping in some of this neon yellow just here in the center. Kind of brighten it up just a little bit. And then just a little smidge of white in the center. All right. So. I'm going to be moving on to my little blue ornament. I'm just going to work around the little trilogy here. I don't know if you want to call it a trilogy or whatever. but Oh, I also forgot to sketch in the little thing that goes on the top. So just sketch in a little shape here. There's one. This one's going to be over here. There's two. And... Mm, here's three so for that I am going to use um, what color is that it's like a golden color I might just go and look straight with that medallion gold but bear with me while I figure this out I'm actually gonna go in with brown I lied and I am just using burnt umber just a regular brown that was already on my palette. And then I'm going to grab some white and blend that into the brown. And it's gonna make a nice little, like a mocha color in between. And I'm just using the edge of my brush to blend that into the brown. Now, I am going to be doing a giveaway for this tutorial. And I'm not announcing it because unless you've actually watched the tutorial, you're not going to know about the key magic word. <laughs> so during the tutorial, I'm not going to say when, I am going to give you a magic word. And if you post your finished painted tutorial with the magic word. Actually, I don't even know if, if I want to do that because then people are going to see the word and they're going to be like, oh, that's the word. If you send me a message with the keyword and you send me a picture of this tutorial that you have done. I will enter you in a giveaway and I will do the drawing probably 
let's give it until uh, Tuesday. So let me write this down because if not, I'm going to forget and then people are going to hate me because I forgot. All right, so Tuesday. You have until Tuesday to get this painted. Send it to me directly here on this profile. Don't go to my Gibby Rocks art page. Don't go to my personal profile because I'm not going to respond. It has to be on the on my Diana Gibby Rocks profile. Send me a message with it. And you'll be entered to win a giveaway for a full set of my new magnets that I just released. Does that keep from having brush strokes so noticeable? Yes. Yes. So, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say that this is the ornament, right? And let's say that I want to add my black to it. If I'm going to just go in with my black and I want to blend in with my red, you can do that. You may have some lines, depending on how experienced you are as a painter. If you have a heavy hand, you might have a harder time blending. Again, although I am not a professional, <laughs> I'm definitely not a professional. So whatever works for you, you can go ahead and do that. Sometimes when you are blending, it's a little bit harder if you do it sideways. Again, depending on your level, depending on how how heavy-handed you are, depending on your, the type of brush that you're using. There's so many factors that go into it. So that's why I try to teach different different techniques so that different people from different walks of life, it's something easy that everybody could do. See, if I'm blending with my brush, I can't get rid of, I can't get rid of these lines until, you know, it dries or whatever. If I'm going to go in with my little dabber, let's just lay the color down in some black, right? You go in from the top, I'm just getting all of the excess paint off of my brush, and you want to just tap in from the top, back and forth. It creates a little bit more of a seamless blend. And again, this might not be true for you. It's just what I have found works for me. And it does make it a little bit easier. Now keep in mind that I'm not going in and smashing this down. This is not this is not what I'm doing. I'm trying to very lightly, it's like you're kissing the you're just tapping it a little good night. It's a it's a good boy rock, right? It's like a dog. It's a good boy. You're not gonna pat your dog like this. You're gonna, you know, oh it's a good boy. So think about it like that. You're, Oh, it's a good painting, you know? It does make blending easier for me. If it doesn't for you, that's okay too. If that's not your preferred blending method, it's 100% okay. It's just a little bit easier from what I've found. So line and the tap from the top method. Okay, you guys are going to have to excuse me for a second because I have been drinking a ton of water and a ton of coffee. I really have to go to the restroom, so I will be right back, okay? Give me a second. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Okay, <laughs> mom of three with a bladder that's the size of a pea, so <laughs> let me get some water. I'm very measly today.
Hey Patricia, I'm Diana. <laughs> I always say I'm your neighbor, friend in the neighborhood, Diana. Um, I'm not really nobody special. I honestly, I'm just here. <laughs> I just kind of am here and I kind of like to go on live to record a little stuff that I do here or there. To recover from Hulk smashing? Yeah, it, if you are Hulk smashing it, wait for it to completely dry and then go back in and redo it. That's what I would do. So if you're going in and you're just like, I'm gonna smash it, <laughs> you know? Let's say that you wanna go in with like a big thing, right? And you're just like pounding it in. The more paint that you have, the better. So it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of Hulk. How do you how do you ruin the Hulk smash? Let me ask. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a teacher. I'm not a professional artist. I'm just a mom that likes to paint. So, and I like to teach other people how to paint because I get asked about it a lot. So, <laughs> um, Anita, what's your question? Oh, um, Vicky, you're special too. Well, let me ask you guys a question. When you guys are Hulk smashing, how are you painting? Is your hand resting on something and you're Hulk smashing or are you holding it over? Are you holding your hand up or are you leaning against something? Tell me. Also, is your blending brush too wet? Because that could also have a very big effect on your... Remember, I've talked about that. You gotta, you gotta also start to get a feel for your brushes, the types of paints that you're using, and how much water is on your brush. Let's say that I get a brush, right? Hold on. Let me, where did that little rock go? Let's say that I get a brush, and I'm just gonna pull it out with just water. It's just sopping wet with water, and I'm gonna go in with my paint. If I'm going to, well, my water is dirty, but if I'm going to do that, and let's say that I'm going to go back in with my black, it's just not going to have the same effect, right? It's going to keep lifting. The more water that you have, it's going to just keep lifting. So are you having too much water on your brush? Arm rest, but the hand is up. Okay. Try resting your, your, try putting something under your wrist also to help with control. I have a lot of dexterity issues because I do get um, flare ups. I get like sharp pain from like here and it goes all the way down here. So my hand sometimes gets a little bit um, cramped. And I say that it's carpal tunnel that never went away during pregnancy, but I'm not sure that it is. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to have like arthritis. Um, I know my grandma has arthritis, um, so I I have a lot of issues with that too. Yeah, that's how I hold my brushes too, Kathy. Okay, so let me get started on this blue. I'm going to lay my color down. I'm going to leave a little circle over here, and we're going to come back to this. Don't worry, we're going to glitzy and glam it up. We're going to draw a circle up here. There's a little hair. And I'm going to fill it in with my blue. So grab whichever brush you want to do. Let me see. I'm just going to grab a brand new brush. It's fluffy. It's a brown brush. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to lay my color straight on. I'm going to fill it up. This brush was the wrong brush to look. You see all those bristles that are everywhere? Terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> and don't forget to not be like Diana. You can move your rock around. 
You don't have to twist your your wrist around. All right, so we're just. What the heck was that? Probably my husband, honestly. <laughs> Let me text him and ask him that he's okay. <laughs> Give me a second. Hold on. Let me reach across over here. That was a very loud thump. Let me see what he says. Let me see who he's still, still alive up there. No, Pat, he's actually assembling. A, we got we had to get a brand new bed um, because I I broke my other one. <laughs> it's one of those like platform beds that has like the wooden slats across it. And oh my God, I, never again will I buy a bed like that. It's lasted us a really good long time. Um, it's lasted us through two, three, good God, three moves. And it finally, like, every time that the movers come and, you know, with the, yeah, he said that he's all right. Um, every time that the movers come and take it apart and put it back together, there's always a, a screw that goes missing or something. And so when my roof was leaking, coincidentally, I was trying to move the bed by myself. And instead of, like, lifting it, I was scooting it and the wooden slats snapped. So new bed. <laughs> so he's trying to put our new bed together. <laughs> Yeah, so Anita. <laughs> okay, so I'm just waiting for this to dry off a little bit, but the same thing that we did over here with the white and the red is what we're gonna do over here. And then we are going to add the white in. So just a healthy little layer of white. Maybe I want to go a little bit closer to the top. And then, listen here, y'all. I'm going to grab some of that baby blue. Instead of blending into this color, I'm going to grab baby blue and blend it into that. So I'm just laying my color down. I'm going to rinse my brush really good. Oh, so it's going to be a wild and kind of night, is what you're telling me. <laughs> it's craft after dark. We've had plenty of those lives, too. Oh, my God. that I think it was, which one was it? That everybody everybody was going nuts, man. Like, even Phyllis. Phyllis was, like, you know, exposing herself over there. She, she was telling us all of her funny jokes. I think it was the New Year's one, the New Year's Milo Balloon tutorial that I did. That one was a wild, or maybe it was a dragon one, because that one, me and Wanda ended up going live for like, I think it was like close to four hours. <laughs> and it lasted a very, very long time, and everybody was kind of, everybody was restless, man. Y'all were spicy that night. <laughs> Honestly, Pat, yes. If y'all want me to be honest with you, yes, okay. I we broke the bet. Like <laughs> but uh, the movement ended up making it worse than what it was, okay? <laughs> I didn't become a mother of three by just sitting here. So we are going to Don't hate me, y'all. <laughs> this is this is the real me, okay? <laughs> so here we're going to just blend tap and blend just blend out that broken bed <laughs> oh yes Patricia of course yeah this is actually gonna be um, uploaded to my YouTube channel if you have not if you aren't driven away by my craziness then please go and watch my other tutorials they get a little spicy sometimes they get a little fun i have i have over 50 something tutorials on my youtube 50 something i know okay i mean y'all are just wild tonight okay <laughs> oh my, i don't think i've ever owned a waterbed actually i know i haven't owned a waterbed i know i've i've been on one 
my grandparents used to have one but that was 30 years ago all right so we're using this cornflower blue what a funny name cornflower what is a cornflower is that like a is that a real thing am i that sheltered i grew up in the desert so i don't know nothing about nothing all right, so we're just putting in some blue. I don't know why I'm patting this in like I'm not about to blend into it. All right, so from here, I am going I am going a little bit heavy with the paint because I'm about to blend some black into it. Oh, yes, it's better than than boring, right? At least you guys are receptive to my craziness. Just going to blend some black in. See, my, my um, brush was too wet, so it made my black a little bit wet. And I'm going to go up and around here, this little crevice. I'm going to wait for this to dry off just a little tiny bit. But I am trying to get as much moisture as I can off of the brush. So I always keep a little rag underneath my paint station so that I can do that. Why do I do that so much? I'll talk and then I'll be like, uh, pause <laughs> continue and if you don't know I just made a face behind camera like doing my facial expressions and you guys couldn't see me and I just realized that so it made me really sad I need to have like a dual camera where you guys can see my face and the expressions that I make when I'm talking <laughs> a blue flower I need to look this up Oh yeah, I definitely hear my husband upstairs with the clinkety clankety of I don't know what. I swear that man, I have a, he got home early today, which is very, very unusual for him. That's why I was like, I'm going to jump on live. Um, but he, instead of like relaxing, he's like, I'm going to put the bed together because it just got delivered today. I told him to wait until the weekend or something, his next day off or something. But he's very excited. I'm very excited for the new bed because it is metal. No more wooden bed. Look at me being an adult getting a metal bed. Honestly, I don't know why I never thought about getting a, a metal bed because I, I don't know. I guess we have one in our spare room. Um, and I always stub my toe on it. But it's one of those like, just it's just a bed frame. It doesn't have a headboard. It's not fancy. It's not nothing you know, because it's just for the guest room. It's just for when my parents come to stay or friends come to visit. Katie's slept on it. Katie knows. Katie knows about my bed in the guest room. <laughs> oh, Katie, by the way, I don't know if I ever told you, but you left your charger here. <laughs> yeah, so, and then it has a shelf on the top that has like a little, um, it has a, a, a outlet so that you can plug your phone in. And then I can also keep my glasses up there. Because I'm blind and I'm always losing my glasses. So I can keep them up there for easy television viewing for when I take my contacts out. Or um, my little hair ties for when I'm putting my hair down to go to sleep. Because my hair is like always, almost always up. I mean it's always in a bun. It's always something, right? I don't like this blend. So I'm just going to go in with some baby blue and try to blend this, this little line out too, okay? In case you're wondering what I'm doing. looking a little that's because i can't see with the glare of the light let me try to move this over here a little bit more you can see what i'm actually doing and if you're if your blending is looking a little like uh, i don't know i don't know about this i think i'm over blending or i'm under blending or something don't be afraid to keep going at it like i stopped explaining what i was doing and i'm just gonna work on it until i'm happy with the result and don't forget that you can do that too, because once this is up, you can 
rewind, fast forward, you can mute me if uh, you can't stand me, that's fine too, as long as you learn something from it, you know? I'm just breaking it up. Okay, I'm gonna grab some water and catch up on these comments that are coming in like hotcakes over here. <laughs> Thanks, Bonita. You got my brain thinking about breaking the new bed. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, Connie. They make beds too high these days. Yeah, I, I've i always had kind of like a, a shorter bed. I don't like the tall beds because I don't want to have to hop into my bed. Okay, my knees already hurt. I'm in my 30s. Like, I just want to lay down. Hey, Ashley, in front of a window. Oh, no, our bed is definitely not. I don't like, I've never, ever put my bed in front of a window because I don't like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the Mexican in me, but my mom was always like, if you put your bed next to the window, a draft is going to get you and you're going to get sick. So I just never do. <laughs> did I teach myself painting? Yes, I did, Patricia. Honestly, You'll if you do end up going to watch my old tutorials, you'll see that a lot of the times I do these on the fly. Like I didn't practice this before I came on live. I kind of was just like, yeah, I, that's what I'm gonna do. And then I teach as I go. Like I learn as I'm going. So I definitely I'm learning with you guys as I'm trying to pretend to teach over here. A touch of purple. Okay, Pat, I see you. Good night, Leslie. Don't forget to rewatch for the magic word. Hey, Joan. Hello, Rock and Arts. Ro rock and Studio Art. I was going to say Rock and Art. <laughs> my friend's head went through the window as they were breaking the. Oh my God, Pat. Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. That while well, I'm, I'm sure she learned her lesson, or he, she, or he learned their lesson. Goodness, break of oh, Jesus! It's like the Olympics over there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of neon red, just a little bit, and I'm just gonna tap it in here. Lay your color down and just kind of tap, tap, tap. Because we are getting a little glare from the red ornament that's shining over here. So this next step is going to be a little bit weird and you're going to be like, why are you doing that? But I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of white here. And then I'm going to tap that baby blue into it. Not too much. We're just adding little little hints of glares here and there. And if you watched my um, Myler tutorial, my Myler balloon tutorial, uh, we did a lot of those glares and shines. And I can't really sit here and explain this is why because I don't know. It's just the reference photo. That's just what we're going off of. We're going to put a little glare here with that baby blue. And then down here, we're going to start to highlight a little bit more. So, where's my little corn flower? Let's add our corn flower blue. I'm adding it down below. And I'm tapping it back up into the black. And then I'm going to add some of the baby blue. Tapping into it. Because remember, this is going to have snow around it. Removing all of the excess paint and just tapping in from the top, okay? From the top. And 
And then, then we're going to grab some white and tap that in at the very bottom. You wanna leave just a little gap between the baby blue and the um, cornflower blue because you do want there to be an outline, but it's just enough to give it a little glare. So what you'll also notice is that when I went in with my cornflower blue, I was like, okay, here's my cornflower, smaller little distance, here is my baby blue, smaller little distance, here is the white. You don't want to overpower all of it. You just want it to be subtle. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of white over here too. It wasn't like bright enough for me. So there we go. Okay, I'm very, very nasally right now. I don't know if it's because it's raining or what. Okay, I'm gonna grab some baby blue and do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna tap it in, little area. And we're gonna go in with some white and tap it in. All right, so I am gonna grab for the first time some of this dark evergreen color. And you're probably asking yourself why, because there's no green in here. Well, don't forget that we're gonna have evergreens around here. So I'm gonna actually put a little bit of a glaze of green here, just, just to round out where the white ends, okay? Just a tiny little bit. You don't want to glob it on, you just want a subtle hint of green. All right. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Soko. Hello, Vivian. If your stone is black, should you base paint white? Yes. I would suggest yes. Go ahead and do that. I mean, you can honestly try to do it on a black stone. It's not impossible. You're just going to have to add a lot more layers to your paint. Um, so base painting it white would be the best option, in my opinion, so that they would uh, pop more, you know, off of the rock. And also because the back is going to be snow, so if you miss any spots or if you're not too comfortable, um, you know, you don't have to worry about having to paint so many layers of white and depending on the type of paint that you have um you know because some some paints are a lot more pigmented than others you may have to add more layers on as well flonies i know i know as honestly this happens every tutorial because i talk so much and you know when sometimes when you're just talking too much it just you get nasally magic word <laughs> that's funny uh, that honestly should be hey deborah all right, so same thing I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna go in with that burnt umber. And then wipe that off, go in with your white. And I didn't really rinse my brush off, so that's why it still has a little bit of a hint of brown. And I'm just gonna tap it in. You can use your blending brushes for this or you could just use the side of your brush whatever is more comfortable for you. Hi Debbie, yes, it's gonna be available later. I am gonna be uploading it to my YouTube and then tomorrow once it's out of resin, I will go ahead and post a photo of it and a post to this group um, with the link to my YouTube so that you guys can go ahead and rewatch it and you can pause, fast forward at your convenience. Hello, Lorraine. All right, so don't worry, we're gonna come back and detail all of the pretty little stuff that's going on up there. But for now, we're gonna move on and we're gonna start base painting this little area over here.
and I'm going to do that. How do you paint the color gold without using gold? Can somebody answer that for me? Does anybody have the answer to that? <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at color matching, but gold is one that I'm like, oh. Let me see if I can try to do it. Let me see. Let's do some yellow. Some more sienna. A little bit of brown. Maybe even a little hint of green. A little tiny hint of green. I do a lot of color mixing. Color mixing. Oh my god, I'm so nasally. I'm about to go blow my nose. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, that's fine. I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm going to take another bathroom break. Hold on. I'm going to take a little bathroom break. Talk amongst yourselves, and I will be right back. Go blow my nose. Man, I tried blowing my nose and nothing came out. <laughs> so here I am. All right. <sighs> Let's retry this now that I don't have to pee anymore. All right. Let's go in with some yellow, maybe some brown, maybe some white. No, some raw sienna. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like it's not like shimmery gold, but it is gold. I guess that's maybe as close as I'm gonna get. Maybe some unbleached titanium. Like a really golden yellow, just let me see. Brown and building up to yellow. I'm mixing, sorry. Yeah, I guess that's that's kind of uh, a good close. So let me show y'all what I did. Brown, burnt sienna, and yellow. <laughs> Pat, I'll send you guys a picture of the new bed once it's up so that you guys could see. Honestly, I'm really, really depressed about the other bed getting tossed to the corner because it, it was a really good bed it was like it was like uh what is the word uh, upholstered it was upholstered and I was like a teal and I'm obsessed with decorating my house in blue tones so I went with oops that's the wrong color I went with brown and then I kind of just added primary yellow to it and it gave me like this really almost has like a green tone to it but I guess it's like the closest color that I could get but that's okay because this gold ornament, we're going to be going over with the uh, medallion gold. And I will show you guys how to highlight, how to use the shimmer shots on top of your acrylics, all of that good stuff in a bit. Oops, I forgot to leave room for my white spot up here. That's fine. We'll just work it in. Let me move back over. All right. Well, Susan, I'm glad that you could pop in. Hey, Alice. Pat is in Alabama. Oh, man, Lorraine, I'm sorry. What colors am I work like in general? I'm I'm using the old world uh, Christmas set that Wanda released.
Aqua reminds you of preschool. That is such an odd memory, but kind of comforting that certain colors can bring that up, you know? So I'm adding my white in. And I'm going to try to go up as close to the top as possible. I just rinsed my brush and I, I took off the excess because I want to drag that white in. I mean, I don't want to drag the yellow into the, into the white. Into the unknown. I mixed, to get this like golden color, um, I just did brown. And then I added in some, oh my God, where's my yellow? Primary yellow. So this is burnt umber and primary yellow, but you guys just mix whatever dark brown and the brightest yellow that you have. And then we're going in with some white. white again and we're just blending out until we get a nice little vibrancy like we've got them with the other ornaments right mm -hmm. honestly Ashley you are right that set is amazing I don't know it's just it's just such a cozy set of colors I don't know if you guys have seen them but it has four shimmer shots and four acrylic fluids. Fluid acrylics. Oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> but they're such pretty colors. It's just like a cozy, like traditional Christmas colors. Like I think, I think nativity set. Ooh, that's, that's a good idea for another tutorial. Like a nativity scene with these colors. I can already see it. Like brick red for the... Yeah, I'm going to plan that. I'm going to plan that. Katie, are you still on? Did you abandon me? Or are you here? I have a question. And we're just going to keep blending until we're happy with it. I have a really harsh line here that I'm trying to get rid of, but I can't because I keep picking my paint up because it's still wet. So I got to wait for it to dry and follow my own advice and wait for it to dry. And then we're going to go in with the same color that we used. And honestly, it was just brown and yellow. Thanks to Deborah. I still kind of want like a more brassy color. And this one came out a lot darker. Hold on. But it's fine. It's going to be covered regardless with gold. Alright, so we're blending and we're blending. And then I'm going to add black in. So... Just tap it in. Remember, we're tapping onto the color so that it's not just straight black. You're not just adding a big old line of black. It's blended in to also pick up the color underneath it. Show you guys some examples of blending using a swiping motion instead of tapping. It's very doable, and it is sometimes how I blend. Just when it, stuff is like rounded like this, I prefer to do this type of method on a different, more if it's like a character or like a tree or a leaf or something. But if it's like a rounded shape too, I would rather just tap. 
so that you don't lose the shape of the sphere. All right, so I'm gonna fix this blending. Don't freak out on me. All right, so let's keep that momentum going. We're gonna bring some of that down. Again, I'm putting down that goldeny brown color and gonna gently kiss the black and go down like this again. Up and around this little ornament. I'm leaving a little tiny bit of the golden around the edge so that we don't lose the color underneath. And I'm just gonna block out this little section right here. What did you guys eat for dinner tonight? I had to fight my kids. We had some words because I had made meatloaf. I had not made meatloaf in so long. And I made some tonight and my son was just like, what is this? <laughs> he was so disgusted. He also has a lot of like sensory issues. Um, so he doesn't like stuff that's too slimy or whatever. But, you know, we've talked a lot about it and I you know, have tried to explain to them that they can't just be chicken nugget kids. They have to, you know, try new foods and they, the thing is that they have to at least try it, right? Before they decide that they're not going to eat it. And he tried it and he kind of chewed around with it a little bit and he was like, hmm, this is good, you know, <laughs> and then proceeded to eat the rest of it. So I would say it was a success. I think it's because I tried to explain it to him. Like this is hamburger. <laughs> it's hamburger meat, you know? And we added some ketchup to it, and he was he was good. So, yay to being able to... I know that moms with um, kids with sensory issues can celebrate when you find a food that is edible on the list of things that they approve of, right? Like, yeah, I can add that to the dinner rotation. I always have to try to implement new foods into their diet. We did that with some green beans and some white rice. It was so good. All right. Yum, tacos. Ashley is over there making tacos. Carrots. Pat, we need to get you some more food than just carrots. Debbie, creamy taco soup. Ooh, that sounds interesting. That actually sounds really good. I've never had any type of taco soup, but that sounds like you add creamy to the front of that, and that sounds my kind of meal. Yeah, well, my son has autism. Um, he was diagnosed with autism, so he has, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff that we're working through. Heck, I have sensory issues sometimes. Mm -hmm. Stir fry veggies and chicken. Okay, okay. Susan said yes, yes, yes. Is that to the? Are you? Um, are you talking about the meatloaf? Yes. You like the meatloaf? <laughs> Hamburger without buns. Okay, okay. Did you do like a lettuce wrap? I have to have something like crunchy when I eat. I'm not going to lie. Lisa said yogurt, granola, and a banana. Okay, that's decent. At least the yogurt, you know, is like protein. It's, it's filling. Yeah, seafood pasta, yum. Yeah, Susan, my son, my oldest is autistic. That's why I went to school to get my my degree in SPED. Teaching SPED. Cheated and brought home longhorn, st longhorn steak. Yum. Did you get a baked potato? That sounds so good. A baked potato with like all the fixings. Ooh, chicken noodle soup. Okay. Yes, my kids love pizza. Oh my god, they love pizza. They could probably eat pizza every day. <laughs> you're awesome, Soko. You are awesome. I love what you're doing in this life for others. All right, so now that this is dry, I'm going to start working back on that blend. Oof, I got my yellow and my white. Let's work that out. Work it out. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Oh no, maybe <laughs> I started dragging my white down. It's okay, let's just brush it off real quick. It's a little oopsie. Oopsies are fine, they can always be fixed. All right. Okay, so now that we are here, I am gonna use some of my neon yellow. If you do not have the neon yellow, it's fine. Just use the brightest yellow that you can find. Maybe mix a little bit of white into it to kind of brighten it up because we are gonna be using a reflection, um, or not using, we're gonna be implementing a reflection down here so that it kind of shines, shines bright like a diamond against the snow, the imaginary snow that's not there yet. It will be, I promise. Gonna grab some of my cornflower blue and start to put in the reflection from the blue ornament. And then remember, we're gonna make a smaller little space for our baby blue. And then we are going to be adding some white in the center there. Very small space. I don't want it to be overtaking the blue like that. I'm gonna grab some water. Elizabeth, God bless you. God bless you, but I know that, I, well, I don't know if you're religious or not, but I don't know, I know that God gave you that, that baby because he knew he was going to have a mama that was going to love him through it. That's amazing though that so many of us can relate to having children with autism or having children with special needs. It's, it takes a, it takes a, a hell of a mom to raise kids with special needs. We are, we are, you're not alone. Brunswick stew. That sounds familiar. I think Heather actually talks about that being one of her favorite meals. I've never, I don't think that I've had that. See sped kids of teachers. Oh, you see? So I just said that. <laughs> yeah, it definitely takes, takes special people to work with them. It takes a lot of patience. My my Nina, well, my mom is a teacher. Um, she doesn't teach specifically sped, but she has had a lot of kids, you know, that have been sped in her classroom. But my Nina, she's a para for a special needs class, and she tells me so many stories. My God, I it it takes a, a toll on your mental health because you just want to be with them like twenty four seven, and follow through with their care and stuff, and it's rough. It's rough rough but worth it I think it all started for me back when I, I'm gonna do the same thing over here okay guys um, it started back for me in high school it might have actually been middle school I don't remember it was a while ago but they had kids volunteering inside of the sped classrooms and um, I used to go and volunteer and I don't know why I did it. I just, I felt like I wanted to because I used to pass by those classrooms. And I just remember one time a, one of my classmates, I won't even call him a friend because he wasn't my friend. He was just somebody that was in my class and we were on our way to lunch and he was just like, man, they scare me. And he said that, you know, about, you know, the kids with Down syndrome and all of that stuff. I was like, why do you say that? Like, why why are you scared? He's just like, well, because look at him. He's just sitting there in the wheelchair, like, you know, doing his thing. And I was like, that's not scary. Like, he's just, you know, he's just living his life. He's just there breathing. He's just a regular kid. Just what? Well, not like a regular kid, but he's just, he's a kid just like you. He has the same limbs. We all bleed red type of thing. And then after that comment that he made, I kind of, um, I, I took interest in that kid. His name was Arturo. I'm never going to forget his name or him. He was amazing. And I used to volunteer in the sped classrooms. They would pull us out for like 
30 to 45 minutes. Um, and we would go and just help them with their work or just help keep them, you know, entertained. Kind of having like a normal sense of feeling like they belonged instead of isolating them. And it was just an experience that kind of stuck with me through my whole life. And I always say, sorry, I'm getting all deep over here. <laughs> I always say that I'm pretty sure that, you know, I was chosen to be my son's mom because God knew that I was going to love him through anything that happened with him, you know? And it's true. I mean, my son is, he has autism, but he is so smart. He has his, it's been a challenge to try to learn the way that he learns and seeing the world through his eyes and seeing the way that his brain works and the way that he learns and retains information. And, um, you know, he's very hands-on and it's just, it, it has just opened my world up. He has taught me a lot about myself, about just kids and how how much they they understand at such young ages even having learning deficiencies you know he has dexterity issues he is in occupational therapy he's in speech therapy um he's but he's so smart you know and we we knew that he was different from around 18 months and we didn't get him like officially diagnosed like I, we tried to don't get me wrong it was a very long process to get an official paper in hand diagnosis for him but he just um it took us years actually and so now we now that we have the paper in hand and it's official after many many hoops you know he's getting the help that he needs but that's why I went back to school to to do that so that I could be there for him where you know the education system was failing him so anyway Yeah, Joan, that's a good practice. Religion and politics. I don't. I definitely don't talk politics with people, because it's just an argument waiting to happen. Religion is another sensitive topic, but yeah, I, I believe that everybody has the rights to believe in what they want to. Hey Jennifer, hey Heather. Yeah, Susan, my son is in a regular classroom too least restrictive environment yeah elizabeth i i can imagine you learn something new about him and probably yourself every single day oh ashley you're so sweet you see, that's what I love about sometimes doing the lives. I know that they're long and I know that they take like two to three hours, but it's so worth it like to have that sense of community and to have that like, God, I'm really not the only one, you know, like I'm not the only one that's that struggles and stuff and just goes through real life things like we're more than just rock painters. We are moms and grandmas and even if you're not a mom or a grandma, you're a human being, and that should be enough to unite us, you know? Same, Debbie. I had a, I have a no politics, for sure, for sure, no politics rule in my <laughs> lives. I have kicked and banned somebody out before because of it. I just don't. It's too much anxiety. Too much anxiety. Anyway. Sorry for going off the deep end there. Let's go back to painting this little ornament over here. I'm going to add a red glare over here. So we are going to go back with our vintage red. And I'm trying to show the colors as I'm going. I'm just going to tap it in. There. I feel like I took away almost all of my color. So I'm just going to keep tapping in. And then I'm going to go in with some of the regular, just plain yellow on top of it. Kind of brighten it up a little bit. And then just a little bit of white. And I very lightly tapped it in, okay? I didn't go full Hulk smash with it. I just very lightly am adding a little glaze. Just a little red. This is what it's looking like so far. 
and then I'm going to grab <clears throat> sorry some white so let's start off with some do I want to do white or do I want to do gray first I think I'm gonna just go in with white first bear with me because teaching snow has not been my forte <laughs> I'm going to try to get clean white because I just picked up some yellow. Where's my bottle? Where's my white? That's oh, right here. Oh my god. <gasps> Got blue on it. My my cornflower. Okay, so we're going to just go in with white, paint around your ornaments. I feel like at the end of the day, as long as your kids are loved and they are happy and they have food and they have a roof over their heads and you can say that you raise them to be kind, then that is what truly matters and what the world needs more of. It's just kindness, man. I know I've already talked about it a lot, but if you have not watched The Wild Robot, it's literally a movie about how kindness can become an important life survival skill. And it's about parenting. It's a it's an animated movie. Yes, it has it's mainly for kids, but man, did I get so much out of that movie as a mom? It is so good. So, so good. Wild Robot. I should probably use a fine liner right here. But I'm just going to live on the edge a little bit. See my hand shaking over here? Where's Trina? Trina Hammett. Because she, the other day I was like, man, I'm so hungry. And she was like, you should go eat some. What did she say? She's like, you should eat some fruit. And I wanted to tell her that I did end up eating some fruit. She would be very proud of me. I did not eat any fattening food. It was so refreshing I had an acai bowl i actually ended up stealing it because my husband got got a tropical smoothie and he was like oh yeah i'm gonna have this acai bowl for breakfast and then i, and then I ate it <laughs> i don't care i nothing is safe what's mine is yours baby like we got married that's what you promised felt no regrets the next day, he's like, where's my bowl? I was like, it's in my belly. Sorry. And I know you're probably like, Diana, why did you paint the white Santorini white? Because we're going to add shading to it, okay? <sighs> yeah, Susan, that is a lot. That is a lot. That doesn't mean that it's not... Um, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing either. You know, the autism, the bipolar, the schizophrenia. Just because it's a lot doesn't mean that it's too much you know what i mean too much to make somebody 
and lovable or anything like that. Yes, Patricia, painting is a big stress reliever. Listens are both in the same I agree, Jennifer. My son is one of the, like, he's he's very, very kind. He's a very, very kind kid. He got burned last, or uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but some kid was, I guess, being a bully on the playground, and he came home with, like, a Band-Aid. I was like, what the heck is that? I was panicking because I was like, you know, the teacher should have called me or something. But he got home. I had some words with her about that. But got home and I took it off and it was like a, it looked like a burn on his arm. And I was like, where did you get this from, Carter? And he was like, I got it from the slide, mom. And he was like, I, um, I was like, okay. Well, I have, every time that I talk to him, you know, I have to kind of prompt him a little bit because he, it's part of his, you know, processing. Like he needs to have a question in order to give you a direct answer. So, you know, he answered the, where did you get this? It was on the slide and said, okay, well, how did you get it? What happened to make you get it? You know, like somebody pushed you and he said, yes. And I said, okay, who pushed you? Was he in your class? And he was like, no, it, it was a kid on the playground and he was bullying my friends. And so I guess this other kid was like pushing the other kids off of the slide. And my son put himself in between, ended up going down the slide wrong my son you know like he defended somebody else and that made me all emotional so let's come back over here let me get my stuff okay so i'm going to out grab a i'm not grabbing a fine liner but i am grabbing a thinner brush so this is the brush that i'm going to be using it's a i don't know what size it is <laughs> It's it's just one of those round brushes that I got from, I think it was Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to go in with some black down here. I'm going to line underneath this ornament. And I know lining with black can be a little bit scary. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off and it's a little bit moist, I'm going to grab the paint while it's wet and drag it down into the white that's also wet. Just because I want to have enough space to blend into, like to do my tapping motion without getting it into the actual ornament. And by doing this, we're just creating some shading, some shading into the snow, okay? So let's grab our little blending brush and just do your best. Go in and tap. And while we're tapping, we are going to add some blue. The best way to shadow snow from my experience, of course, it's not the ultimate to best way, but it is the way that I've found works is to go in with some blue because if you just put in black with gray it's going to be very just like a nasty muddy looking color right so i am using just a regular primary blue right underneath the black remember i said that this tutorial was going to be a lot of blending and I'm going to bring that down because it's also, I'm going to do the same process over here. But before this dries up, I am going to add some white into it and just kind of lighten that out and blend it. And just tap into it and create a your little shadow in the snow. Right in there. And then let's go with some black again. That rain is pitter pattering outside. And tap, tap, tap. 
that tap away. Okay. See, I have a little line right here that I needed to get rid of. Maybe we want to go in with a little bit more blue, a little bit more black, just until you're happy with it. I have some white on my brush and that's why it's graying up. And this is just primary blue, okay? You can also, I don't know why I'm not just using my baby blue, but you can do that. <laughs> I'm over here making it complicated. I'm super excited because one of my favorite artists in the world, you guys probably most definitely do not know who it is, but he just announced um, that he's going on a world tour. And then after that comes an American tour. And I went to go see him last year. It was an amazing experience. And so, once he drops his American tour dates, probably for next fall, guess where your girl is going to be? I'm going to save up to go to that concert. <laughs> what was the last concert you guys went to? Sorry, I am going in with some watered down black. Okay, I got some black, tapped off the excess, and I just used the moisture that's on my brush to bring it up very, very lightly. I don't want it full black in here in this little crevice. Some white. Okay. Good night, Ashley. Oh, she probably already left. <laughs> Good night, Ashley. Yes, Payne's Gray would work beautifully because it does have that blue undertone. We need rain. Yeah, we needed rain bad, Susan. It had been, it was a very, very dry summer. We had a, a really bad wildfire here. Um, it covered, I think, like 200,000 acres. It was insane, and, and we really desperately needed that rain, especially because Oklahoma is so windy, so it just spiraled out of control. <laughs> Anita! Pink. Dang, did you go to the same concert as Lisa, Anita? Were you there? I've never seen her in concert. Backstreet Boys in Las Vegas. That's awesome. Okay, Pat, look at you, Backstreet Boys. <gasps> Jennifer, oh my God, I love the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I had the honor of seeing them once live. Psh, insane, just insane. I cannot wait. To, I don't even know if they're touring anymore, if they're still a thing. I, I could not wait to take my kids to that. Jimmy Buffett, wow. Lisa, I want to see pics. Send me some pics if you have any. Electric Light Orchestra. Okay. Okay, so Pat was just living it up in Vegas. <laughs> Roger Waters. Hmm. Okay, never heard. Never heard. Okay, Karen, did you I did you go to the the Eras tour? Look at you. I gotta look up the Trans Siberian Orchestra. I feel like you just unlocked the core memory for me. <laughs> I 
All right, so from here, I'm gonna highlight around here, same effect. Go on with some black. Yeah, I the last concert that I, I went to was Bad Bunny in, um, but I'm, I'm Hispanic, so you guys probably don't ever listen to my music. <laughs> the last concert I went to was Bad Bunny in uh, May. Oh, God, it was so good. So good. I love him. I adore him. My husband doesn't speak a lick of English, uh, Spanish, but there he was, bumping along to his music. It's kind of funny because my kids, uh, my youngest... For the longest time, we couldn't understand why, but that was all he would listen to and that was all he would fall asleep to was Bad Bunny. Which is ironic because he doesn't speak Spanish either. I'm trying. I'm trying to be, you know, on top of it and teaching my kids to be bilingual, but it's for sure my oldest has does not respond well to it. He just does not have any interest in learning it. My daughter is sort of getting there. And my youngest, well, I don't know. We'll see. It's hard. It's hard when I'm not near my, my culture and near my, my family. And it's hard because my husband also doesn't speak Spanish. So, you know, that's how they learn is hearing it in the house. And I've tried but it is, it's, it's harder. It's harder to teach it than to just grow up around it. I'm gonna put some, a little bit of blue around here. Okay, so here we have our little ornament sets. This little edge is kind of bugging me okay Lisa ain't no way you're 60 girl Ain't no way you're 60. Uh uh. I've seen your profile picture. There is no way. What are you drinking? A jelly roll. Okay. You know what, Jennifer? You are so right. Because you know what? Jeremy, Katie's husband, was jamming out to Bad Bunny over here with me, too. And he was all. You know, they were, that's all that they were listening to when they were here. Probably drove them nuts, but they did respond to it. Oh, God, my laptop just told me that I have a little battery. Hold on. Let me plug it in. Okay, in about, in about like 10 minutes, somebody mm, comment to please switch the charger from my computer to my phone. Because I am going to forget and then my battery is going to die. Okay. Oh, God. I didn't realize what time this was. Why have I been on live for so much? I'm just yappity yapping tonight. Oh, well, it's, it's hard when, you know, it's hard when. Oh, Heather's texting me. It's hard when I have a good crowd and you guys are so interactive. I just want to stop and chit chat. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start to put in some more white because it dried up because I'm just a little blabber mouth over here. Let's do it section by section. So here we're going to put some white and I'm using kind of like a bigger scruffy brush than the blending brushes. And I'm going to grab some primary blue, which I'm just using... The first one that I could find, primary blue, and a little bit of black, right? So I got it right here, and then I'm just, oh, I'm just mixing, and I still had a little bit of white. So it's gonna create like a little. And this is if you don't. Payne's gray is a good option. It's kind of the same shading that we had over here, and I'm just gonna tap, tap little, little spots here and there. Okay, 
again i'm not a, i'm not a pro at like painting snow or teaching it yet so bear with me i'm gonna grab a little bit more black and kind of create a little edge sort of like a tuft of snow you know what i mean so i'm trying to get as much of the black off of my brush as i can so that i can just tap it down and i don't want like a crazy blended line because it's snow right so snow has all these tiny little particles so even if you wanted to just do crazy taps and i like this brush because it, it is frazzled and these are the best types of brushes for texture stuff like that right so let's rinse it off get all of that off and then i'm going to layer down some white again just heavy-handed because i'm just trying to create a barrier for me to blend into grab some of that blue blue black gray mix that we did like a Payne's gray color. Create little tufts here and there. And this honestly might all get covered by the evergreen leaves anyway, so don't 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 be too stressed out about the snow. I'm gonna create a little tuft of black, just trailing it down. Try to um and get as much off of it of the brush as I can and then blend that way so that it creates like a ridge right like a ridge of snow maybe you want some snow particles here maybe you want some there just kind of wing this part with me because again I'm not very good at teaching snow I don't know if I'm good at teaching at all <laughs> but here we are here we are like three hours into a tutorial do the same over here maybe maybe i'll do some more right here because i do want for sure want an evergreen leaf here so i'm not going to waste my time trying to create snow there all right so blue black and white nice little gray great tone and we're just tapping in I know, I know, Crystal, I gotta go home. <laughs> I'm actually, okay, oh my god, I'm not even gonna say anything because I don't wanna drink it, but I might be going home. Girl, if I do, we better, I swear, if we don't meet up, I will show up at your house, I have your address, and I'm gonna be like, yo, let's paint a rock together. <sighs> because my husband did just tell me today that he um, put in for a holiday block leave, and we're like, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? I think we're gonna go home. I think I might be going home for the first time in a year. I really, I, you know, I just want to see my grandparents. <laughs> I just want to see my grandpa. He's, you know, getting up there in age. And I'm very, very, I wouldn't even say that I'm homesick because I don't know that I miss El Paso. I don't know that I, it's, it's a crazy city. Um, It's just, it's very, very big. It's, it's bigger than what i'm used to now <laughs> after living in lawton oklahoma this little small city town you know i can't i don't know home for me debbie is el paso texas uh born and raised there it's at the very very edge of texas almost doesn't count um uh that's that's where home is for me lived there moved away when i was 26 uh Ever since then, I have lived in Hawaii. I lived there for three years. I miss it every single day of my life. Every single day of my life. <laughs> I can't stress it enough. And then we lived in Colorado, and now we live in Oklahoma. So, going up here, I'm going to grab a fine liner. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to stop blabbering on over here. I realize how late it's getting. Y'all know I start to get cranky after 8. I'm like a little gremlin. I have to be fed. Okay, I'm gonna grab a fine liner brush. I don't know if this is the one I've been using, but it's gonna have to do. I'm gonna grab some black and we're going to create some little lines here. If you see me start to speed through this, it's because Diana's in full panic mode now that we realize it's almost eight o'clock. Oh my god. I mean, I know that I don't have to be at the bus stop in the morning, but, you know. 
still want to go spend some time with my mans. I swear if y'all bring up the bed. <laughs> I swear. Oh my god, did I do that backwards? I did. I did it upside down. Oh well, it's okay. Alright. So we're just creating some little lines, right? Like a like a regular ornament. Um, Debbie, at, we're we're at Fort Sill, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. It's Lawton, Lawton area. I don't I don't know exactly where that is, but we're about an hour southeast of. Um, we're about an hour southeast of Oklahoma City. Okay, so here we are. And I'm going to sort of speed through this part a little bit. I'm going to add some white right here. Maybe some white right here. I'm going to add a little bit of white here to block out that line that I did. Some white here and here. And I'm just putting little, little lines of white, right? It's not nothing too fancy. I'm going to zone that off with the top. Maybe some white here, a little light here. And that's all I'm going to do for that because the rest is going to be covered in this beautiful medallion gold. And then we are going to also put the little ornament. Well, hold on. Let me line it up here. Put the where the little hook is. This fine liner is the the bad one, you know when your when your fine liners start to like fray and then they get not so fine. <laughs> now I know why this one was at the edge of my desk. It's probably trying to get rid of it and it's over here hanging on for dear life. And then we're gonna go over those with white too. So, in the meantime, I am going to grab some black on my fine liner. You can mix it with black and brown just so that it's not just a dull. you know, color. I'm gonna create your line here and create a line here, kind of like a V shape. And then we're gonna do another one here, maybe going across like this. And then I'm gonna stop because we're gonna start to pull out our beautiful dark evergreen color. Let me get some water. Pat is <laughs> over there with the bed. Oh my God. Oh, the charger. Yes, thank you. Okay. Let me switch it out over here. Hold on. Let me see what percent my battery is at for my laptop. Okay, my laptop is at 14% as well as my phone. <laughs> but the phone needs to be charged more than the laptop. Okay, hold on. Thank you guys for that. Okay, just plugged it in. Good night to break the bed with all the thunder. Well, let me tell you, we have sound machines, okay? <laughs> we learned very long ago that we need sound machines because we we are military houses are connected to um each other, so I'm literally like our walls are connected. Our houses is like kind of like a big really really big duplex and um I'm going to grab some white here and my and some some white and some of that golden yellow that you have that we used earlier or you could just use regular yellow uh to outline this and so i can hear everything my neighbor does and i'm sure she can hear all of mine too so we have always slept with a sound machine i can't sleep without one now so we have the white noise blaring at all times in every single one of our rooms my daughter's room the boys's room and our room okay so from here is that from here I am going to create a little bit of a shadow underneath here can't forget the details and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna lay some black down and I'm gonna add water to it to dilute it 
And I'm gonna just very cautiously create a little shadow down here. Little details. And from here, I'm gonna fix this little edge. Honestly, I can fix all of the extra stuff off camera because I'm just trying to get this done so that you guys can have the basis to it. And let me just heat gun this really quick so I don't smear it with my hand. Hold on. It's just so that I don't smear it. I ended up smearing it anyway, but what ifs? Okay, oh, and some pistachio green. Oh, God, yes, this color is so pretty. So I might make a mix of both of them, right? I'm going to go back and forth between both of them. And I kind of have them both on my, um, uh, my brush. And we're just going to draw some lines to create some evergreens. Double dip. Using our fine liner. You can't see with this glare. Evergreens are kind of easy because it's just, you know, lines. Little pine needle lines. Okay, so I have decided that the magic word is going to be thunderbed. Thunder bed two words not one thunder bed remember to send me a message with the magic word you feel free to also post your rock just don't post the magic word send me the magic word but don't just send me a magic word and be like yeah that's it you gotta actually paint the rock You have until Sunday. I will draw a winner on, no, did I say Sunday? You have until Tuesday, I said, Tuesday. You have until Tuesday after the Veterans Day holiday to get it painted, get it submitted. And that's the last I will say about that. A full 12 pack of magnets for me. I know it's not like that big of a deal. You're probably like, whatever. I don't really care about getting your magnets. But for those of you that do want to, there is your chance. Like, who does she think she is? Okay, let me grab some more. And this evergreen over here. Oh, it's looking so cute, right? Or is it just me? <laughs> Let's keep going with this painting of the evergreens. I know I could have probably made these a little bit thinner and a little bit nicer, but whatever. At this point, YOLO, <laughs> you guys will be much better at fixing those than me. Honestly, what I should have done is I should have just gone in with some straight evergreen instead of trying to lighten it up and then highlight it with pistachio. So let me do that for one of them so that you guys can kind of see. So this, um, this is the dark evergreen color. It's the fluid acrylic from the old world Christmas set and it is just this gorgeous green man oh that thunder I love a good storm my husband likes to open the windows and like see the lightning he's all romantic he's like let's look at the thunder the lightning 
not look at the thunder, but hear the thunder and watch the lightning. As he's from Florida, so he really just misses those thunderstorms so bad. He always tells me about them. And he's like, God, I really need a good storm. He says that from time to time. So what I'm going to also grab is that... Oh, where did that color go? Jesus, I just had it in it like... Do you guys see... Where did it go? Did I put it back? Yeah, I did. Yellow ochre. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna put a couple of notches into this evergreen. And you can just do that by doing little crisscrosses over the black stem. And then, because I'm impatient, you see? You see the little green that we added? Oh, you see it all coming together now. Let me dry this real quick. Let me write my little word down too before I forget. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to grab some of that pistachio green. I'm going to put some more down because the other one has ever evergreen in it. And I'm going to go over on one side of the the little blades that I did to kind of highlight them. You don't have to do it over every single one because that's too tedious. But just put a little, a couple of colors, a couple pops of colors in there. And you can be more detailed with it. I'm just trying to rush through it so that I can get it painted and get it done for you guys. Okay. Next, we're going to start adding shimmer, all of that good stuff to it. So, I'm going to grab some of the Cognac Velvet Brown. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm going to grab my little blending brush. And you guys are going to see how crazy the effect is when you add shimmer. Hold on. I can't I can't see with the glare. Let me put it down. These are so pigmented. I have to like rub some of it off. You went from, oh, it's cute, to like, oh, it's shiny, and it shimmers. Add some of it over here. There's a hair. There's a hair in my painting. And I'm just tapping it in lightly. I don't want to go full heavy metal with it. We're just trying to give it some... Woo! <laughs> All 
All right. And then we're going to also grab some oyster pearl and maybe some latte pearl. Let's use some oyster pearl over here on these. Oh, 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 the cap went flying over on these two. Make sure that you don't have, I mean, my God, come on, look at that. much but too much paint okay and we're just tapping it around giving it a little extra glow I mean come on <laughs> come on how can you not want to buy all of their products right we're going to do the latte pearl on this one. Just insane. Insane. They're, oh, God. The glow is just so beautiful. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put some of the oyster pearl over here on the side too because I'm going to keep working with it for a little bit. And I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight here, here, and here. Make those babies pop. Tapping it in, tapping it in and tapping it in. And the great thing about it is that they are just extra shine. So you don't have to worry about blending it anywhere, right? I'm gonna use the excess over here. I mean, it just makes everything pop. And then we're gonna go in with some of the medallion gold. Let's, whoosh, goodness, look at that. This is adding highlights here and there. And you're probably like, you know, what was the point of painting it if you're going to cover it? Because it adds the glow. I mean, it just, you cannot, it's unmatched. Just wait till I resin it and you guys are really going to see it pop. So, I'm going to add some gold. Honestly, for this top, this top part right here, you can just add a little dabs here and there. It doesn't have to be perfectly filled because you already have the color set underneath it. This is just to make it pop. So I'm going to also be adding some of the um, Cognac Velvet Brown. Since it's rounded, you get different reflections of different colors going through it, right? It's very um, shimmery, very metallic. And then I am going to use some of the Latte Pro. Just a little, a little tiny bit that I need. to kind of highlight the edges here. And then gonna go in with the with the actual gold up here. And then I am also going to be grabbing some of the previous sets. Hold on. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one too. Man. Okay. 
So these are from previous sets. This is tree green or sage, whichever one. Oh, whichever one you feel comfortable using. I think I'm gonna just go with the tree green because it is just a gorgeous color. I mean, truly, truly gorgeous. Look at that. Just oh, so good. Add a couple highlights here and there. Almost done, guys. Thank you guys for bearing through this with me. I know it was a long one. I know if you're watching the replay, you're probably like, good God, let's fast forward this. I wish I could fast forward through it too, guys. <laughs> All right. Just a couple little shimmers to make it kind of pop a little bit. Last but not least, you already know. You already know what I'm going to do. Luna Dust. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's put it in. I'm grabbing a whole entire different... I don't know why I took the cap off. Like <laughs> This is not one I have to take the cap off for. I'm going to grab some of the Luna Dust. And I'm just going to go over my snow. That's what I'm going to do. Go over the ridges. Anywhere that there's not a shadow, I'm just going to fill it in. I'm telling you right now, if you don't have them, winter's coming up. All the winter paintings, all the Christmas paintings. Luna Dust is going to be your friend. And Snowbow. Those are my two go-tos for um, any type of snow, holiday, Christmas paintings. They are absolutely stunning. And that's what we're doing. There. I feel like you can't see it until I zoom in. Oh, I can't wait to resin this. Okay, guys. That's it for me. That is it for me. If you wanted to, if you feel like, oh, this is missing something, what you can also do is you can just highlight with white. Give it a final shine. You can go in also with some of that, um, the Oyster Pearl. What do you guys think? That's all I got for y'all tonight. So pretty. And then also, I'm actually not sure if she has these in her shop anymore. Hold on, before I look at anything. Oops, let me make sure I actually have them. Uh, see, I don't know if Katie or one is on. I don't know if she has them in her shop anymore, but she was selling these last year, and I got several of them because they are amazing. This is the um, Opaque Snowflake Mixin and the Iridescent Snowflake Mixin. Um, these I do use a little bit more. These are a little bit thicker, and they will require a little bit more of a sealant. Um, but these I like to put in when the um, glitter whips are wet and just, you know... Grab a little wet paintbrush or something, pick one up. Okay, you just want to make a liar out of me. Oh, I picked up several, that's why. <laughs> Oops. And just place them down while your whip is still wet. The um, liquid gel that they're using in the whips is a really good adhesive for stuff like this. Hold on, I'm picking up this. these snowflakes. I'm not even noticing. I need to ask Wanda. I need to check to see if she still has these in her shop. Because I might need to order some more. Christmas is coming and all of these paintings. All the snow paintings. It's so pretty. Okay, I might need a little bit more of the glitter. There we go. Okay. So, let me show you guys what they look like. Oh, you can actually kind of see them. They're iridescent, so... 
you see them with the flashes of the light see that right here okay guys that's it that's all i got for you guys tonight you guys have been such an amazing crowd thank you <laughs> the crowd goes wild um you guys have been a, a great crowd honestly tonight you guys are very entertaining very lively very um interactive and i cannot tell you how much i appreciate that thank you for taking the time to be here tonight spending some time with me this evening um testing out the new set i i don't think that i missed a color i think i used every single color in the set so let me know if you try it you already know what to do message me your picture with your word and that's it <laughs> go break my bed Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. I am hoping to see you guys soon. Remember, I'm always open to suggestions for um, tutorials. Sometimes I do get them and I'm like, oh, that's a little bit too advanced. I don't think that I can do that on camera. But I mean, Christmas is coming up, y'all. So thank you guys for being here and taking time out of your day to spend with me. That truly means a lot and it makes it worth it. I can't wait to see y'all's art and I will talk to you guys soon.